Hi everyone, I'm Persika and I'm a SnapLens Network Ambassador. Uh, I'm from India, but I'm currently based in London and I've been creating lenses since 2018. I love creating fashion AR lenses and today I'm going to teach you how you can create your fashion AR lens. This workshop is also st sponsored by Snap. Okay, so let me quickly share my screen. Okay. So this course is a two-part series about creating fashion AR pieces. Uh, by the end of the series, you should be comfortable with creating 3D clothing and importing it in Lens Studio, uh, adjusting the fit of the garments and adding cloth simulation to it, and also assigning materials and textures, and finally publishing the lens. In today's class, um, in today's class, we are going to focus on my workflow of creating the 3D garments, also how to prepare the base body mesh and import the garments in that studio, adjust the fit, add shoes to it and publish the lens. So this is a look that we are going to create. Simulation we're going to learn in the next class. Uh, apart from that, we are going to learn all of these things today. So let's get started. So first things first, I want you to download uh, these things. So of course we need Lens Studio, we need uh, the body mesh reference, and I've also provided some assets. So there's a drive link. So all of these links will be posted in the chat. And uh, also if you have any questions, you can just drop it in the chat and I'll answer the end. Also this uh, workshop is recorded, so you can always come back to it. Uh, on Snap's YouTube channel. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, when you when you download the body mesh, you will see that there are two uh, models provided. One is the T pose body mesh, and one is the A pose body mesh. So why do we need them? Uh, firstly, uh, whenever you create three D uh, garments. Uh, if you wanted to track uh, to our body, we would have to, you know, create bones or joints and rig it. But um, uh, the feature that we're going to use today, the try-on feature, allows us to do just that without having to rig our 3D models. But the only requirement that feature has is that uh, whatever garment we create needs to uh, be around the reference body mesh right here and that the vertices of the garment that we create uh, shouldn't intersect with the body mesh. Okay, so that's the only requirement. And now, uh, which body mesh to use? Uh, of course, uh, it depends on the garment that you're creating. Uh, you could use uh, either of these because today we're going to create a flared uh, look, uh, flared pants with flared pants. So we'll use the A pose just because there's room to create the flare. Okay. So let's move ahead. So in order to create uh, garments for, uh, in order to create garments, there are like two workflows. One is you directly model your garments like you would uh, model any 3D object. So you would just have to uh, uh, model it around the body mesh. And the other workflow is using simulation software which allows you to just draw your patterns in 2D and convert it, and it converts uh, into 3D automatically. And you can just simulate it like so. So we're going to use the second workflow uh, because it's uh, simpler to create the garments uh, and also it saves time. Uh, if you're new to creating uh, 3D models, this, this is also very, easy to learn because in case you've used like uh, Photoshop or Illustrator before and you've used pen tool in it, uh, it's basically like creating 2D pen tool designs and then you can just simulate it and it would create the 3D model for you. So let's see how I use this workflow to create my garments. So first thing is we need to prepare our body mesh. Now, what do I mean by preparing the body mesh? Uh, imagine uh, I am dressing a mannequin, okay? So if I were to dress a mannequin that is blocky and has hard edges, 
the garment that I, that I put on top of it would also take that shape. So you see that our default body mesh is has hard edges and is very blocky. And if I simulate my garment on top of that, you'll see that uh, it takes this weird shape like with sharp edges and we don't want that. So I'll just prepare my body mesh to be uh, very smooth and we'll see how to go about that. So what you can do is take the uh, body mesh into a 3D software of your liking, like Blender or Maya or Cinema 4D, and just go ahead and subdivide it. So now you can see that uh, when I sub uh, subdivide it, it um, gets smoother. The surface is now much smoother. But the only problem is that it has shrunk. Okay, so like I said, the only requirement the try on feature has is that the vertices of the garment shouldn't uh, inter intersect the default body mesh. So in the right hand side, you can see that I've just given a red color to my default body mesh. And uh, you can see that the subdivided model, which is in gray, has completely gone in within it. Okay, so all the vertices. Uh, have definitely intersected and have gone inside the default body mesh. And if I were to take this model into Marvelous Designer or Clo, uh, my clothes would also sink inside the default body mesh. So to tackle that, what I do is I'll just go ahead and use a sculpting tool. Okay, so a sculpting tool just helps you to mold the 3D model like you would mold a uh, clay, which is why it's called sculpting tool. So you use a sculpting tool to inflate it. So there's there's just this brush that you get, which is called inflate. And imagine you are uh, inflating a balloon. Okay, so you're just uh, adding air to it and it increases in volume. So that's basically what I'm doing. I'm just using a sculpting tool like inflate. Now, again, if you use Blender, you can just go to the, go to the sculpting section and uh, use a similar brush, which inflates the uh, model. And I'll just make sure that all the vertices of the uh, body mesh that I'm preparing is outside the default body mesh. So you can see right here, I'm just trying to reduce the amount of red that I see. And in the end, uh, I have completely, uh, you know, brought all the vertices of my smooth body mesh the uh, default body mesh. The only thing you need to make sure is that the inflated model uh, is as close to the default model as possible. So like the vertices is, is, are close to the model because in Lens Studio, it's going to use, uh, so because we have not rigged it, right? So it's going to use something called as, um, you know, the proximity or the distance between uh, the default body mesh and the garments that you create. So it's just going to calculate the distance between the vertices of the two and help it fit uh, fit the user. So basically it's going to, you know, like uh, give it like weights, like skin painting basically, and use the closest distance verte uh, vertex to, to give those weights. So yeah, so we'll make sure that uh, the, inflate, the inflating is done to an extent where the vertices have not completely gone uh, far, okay? Now, uh, if you were to ask me about Persica, why didn't we just scale it, okay? Like we could have just scaled the model instead of inflating. So why we didn't do that is because in the right-hand side, you can see in the video, if I just grab the subdivided model and hit scale, you see that it scales uh, overall, like the arms and the legs also scale up and now they're not matching the default body mesh. So the calculation in Lens Studio would uh, not work, okay, because uh, the legs are not where, it's, uh, where they're supposed to be and the arms as well. So, uh, so that's why we've not used uh, just scaling and we have used the inflating method. Okay. Now, just to summarize, in case I've gone too fast, we've taken our default body mesh, we've taken the A pose because we are making the garment that the A pose would 
help us make then we've gone ahead and subdivided it because we want the mannequin to be smooth for the you know the clothes to be uh, you know smooth looking and because it has shrunk we have gone ahead and inflated it uh, so so yeah so right now our body mesh is basically ready and you can take this to a uh, marvelous designer or clo and simulate your clothes on top of this but because i'm creating clothes for a female i like to have the mannequin so to speak uh, in uh, have a female body or a feminine shape basically so what i do is i further go ahead and uh, use again the sculpting tools to uh, give it a more feminine look okay so i'm just creating uh, so it's basically like if you if you take a certain body shape of mannequin you would have the clothes fit it in that certain way so i want like a curvaceous pants and uh, you know like a nice um, top so i'm just creating the body mesh to uh, that shape okay so yeah i have created that now uh, you'd say it's done and yes we can take this again to marvelous design on clo and start with our garment making process uh, but i like to do one last thing that is add shoes okay so because my main lens is going to have shoes in it i want the pants to simulate in such a way that it would fall on the shoe naturally so which is why i also add shoes to the body mesh um so yeah so my uh body mesh is ready we've subdivided it inflated it give it a feminine uh, gave it a feminine look and we've also added shoes to it now let's go to the uh software the cloth uh, cloth simulation software so in this case i'm using marvelous designer so what i do is i just take like a default t-shirt and try to fit it over our model again for those who uh, don't know about marvelous designer or clo or any um, cloth simulation software as you can see on the right hand side we have certain designs made in 2d and those same designs are then uh, created in the left side panel which is in the 3d panel right here and they also look uh, similar to how you would create clothes in real life like you would you know uh, cut the patterns and then sew it so it uses a similar process you make patterns you sew it and then you see it uh, you know simulating and getting created in 3d on the left hand side so it's very simple uh, if you are new to 3d this is the best way to create garments uh, so yeah you don't have to take uh, worry about you know like knowing extrude and uh, all of those 3d terms so so yeah so this is a really good way of creating clothes so as you can see i've just taken the uh, default t-shirt and the default pant and i have um tried to fit it uh, on my body mesh and the next thing i'm doing right here is you have this reference uh, you know like a shadow you can see right here uh, so that's our that's our body mesh basically so i'm just trying to um align it uh, so that i understand the length and the length of the garment and all that so so yeah that's the next thing i do then i delete the sleeves because we don't want it now of course um if you're just creating a t-shirt and pants i mean you could just export that but because we want uh, a particular look like a customized look uh, so we'll go ahead and change the patterns so in this case i am just uh, moving the edges on top and again this works similar to if you were to create an illustrate uh, illustration in photoshop or illustrator you would do in such manner like you know just use the pen tool create the pattern you can see i just created some points dragged it inside and you have the cut uh, shown right here in 3d so so yeah so I, i again repeat the same thing on the a uh, behind piece of course uh, if i were to do this in real life there's no undo button but because we are doing this in a software we can undo our patterns so here you can see there's like some problem happening but we'll tackle that later the next thing i do is just add some points to our uh, to our pants 
because I, I want the bottom to be flared. So, so yeah, so I flare that. Again, uh, so the pants are ready. We've used, uh, because we use the shoe, we know how the pants should sit uh, and it won't intersect with our shoe. And here I'm just changing the sewing lines. Like you can see that these lines are nothing but uh, stitches basically. So right now it's it's also stitching this cut right here, which I don't want. Uh, I want it open, right? So I don't want it uh, to be stitched. So I'm just deleting that sewing and I am creating new stitches in this part and this part right here. So deleted the sewing and uh, created new stitches and just simulated. So again, this uh, workshop is recorded and you can follow along with me uh, when you're creating your 3D models. I've also provided these 3D models in the drive link. So you can follow along the Lens Studio part of things. So yeah. Okay, so the garment is ready. Now the best part about, uh, I mean, maybe the second best part about uh, a cloth simulation software is that it creates UVs for you, which is like amazing because if you have created 3D models before, you know, creating UVs is a task. So it creates UVs for us. So basically whatever 2D pattern you created is your UV and uh, you can just uh, export it, uh, export the 3D model and you would have the UVs sorted. And then we can just take it to our texturing software and texture it. So yeah, you can see that the garment is ready and we also have the UVs on the right hand side. And uh, let's go ahead and texture it. So, so for texturing, we could use, so you could use any uh, image, um, image-based software, like you could use uh, Photoshop and Illustrator as well to create your, uh, you know, textures, but again, you would just get the base color and we'll see uh, how to, how you can create textures using two, two methods. One is you directly take it in a cloth simulation, uh, sorry, in a texture software like Substance Painter. And we'll also see how you can create it in Photoshop. So let me just play this for you. So yeah, so I've imported the uh, model in Substance Painter. And the first thing I do is change the environment map. Okay, so if you worked with Substance Painter before, you must have noticed that you created some pretty looking textures in Substance Painter, but then they don't appear the same in Lens Studio. It's probably because you're using different environment maps. Uh, so, you know, uh, in, Substance Painter, maybe the default uh, environment map is Panorama, and the one that is in Lens Studio is Echo Park. So, because of the two different uh, environment maps, the looks differ. So, what I do is I just take that environment map and put it in uh, Substance Painter. And now you can see that it gives this bluish tone to it. So, of course, the colors, uh, you know, uh, it has effect on colors when uh, seeing it. So this is just for us to see our final result. Uh, so that it looks similar in both the software. So yeah, and there are many, um, Substance Painter has many pre-made materials for you. So again, it's very simple, just drag and drop. So I'm just dragging and dropping this cloth material and it's called Fabric Flannel Tartan. So I've just dragged and dropped it. Now I'm just customizing it change the base color, change the stripe colors. And uh, the next thing I do is mask out the folds. You see that um, the pants are filled with folds, which I don't want. So I'll just mask it on the top part and keep it only at the bottom where, you know, you want to illustrate like a loser fit. Again, I'll use the same, um, same material for the top and customize the colors. And yeah, it's like that simple. It's very simple to create uh, textures in Substance Painter. So here yeah, you have the textures. And now to the right, uh, I've just shown you how you can use Photoshop 
to create your texture. You of course won't get the normal map and the material params in Photoshop, but you do get a nice base color. And we could um, combine that with existing materials found in uh, Lens Studio assets. So we'll see how to do that in the class today. So yeah, you don't, uh, so UVs are basically like whatever you create, you need to, you know, um, create within this particular outline. Anything outside it will not show up on your uh, 3D uh, model, but uh, so I didn't have to be so precise with making the outline, but just so that I'm a bit keeping the video a bit, bit aesthetic, I have uh, made it a bit precise, but you can leak outside, you know, the outline. Just make sure whatever your main content is remains within uh, this UV outline, basically. So yeah, let's go ahead and create that. So we have the Photoshop texture and we have the substance textures. We're going to use both in our uh, lens. Now that we've created the textures and we've created the garments, let's import it in Lens Studio. If you have any questions, please feel free to put it in the chat and we'll address it in the end. So yeah, so we have Lens Studio right here and here there are many templates uh, that are provided by Lens Studio and you could just use the try on template. Uh, so that it's right here. You can just use this template to uh, create uh, the, you know, lens, but I'm going to teach you how you can do it from scratch. So I just go to new project and open up a blank project. Uh, yeah, so we have a blank project. So let's get started with uh, making, uh, sorry, by just adding a body mesh. So in my objects panel, I'll just click on add new object and write body mesh and add the full body mesh right here. And we can't see the whole body mesh. So let me just quickly uh, change the preview from a preview panel in the right. Uh, I'll just change it. Yeah, so now I can see it clearly. Okay, so let's import our uh, 3D model. So in the resources panel, I'm just clicking on this add button right here and hitting from files and adding my 3D garment. Again, uh, the 3D models are provided in the drive link. So you could just add, um, you could just use that to follow along. Okay, so we have a 3D garment. Now, usually in Lens Studio, if you were to add a 3D model, you would directly, you know, uh, drop the 3D model in the objects panel, but we are not gonna do that in this case. What we are going to do is use this body mesh, okay? Uh, I'll click on the body mesh. In the right-hand side, I can see this full body mesh render visual. So what I'll do is I'll just right-click and select, okay? So I've selected the full body mesh in our resources. Now I'll go ahead and just change the external mesh, okay? So the first thing right here is uh, body index and body index is just whether you're creating the garment for uh, the first person or the second person. So zero indicates first person. So I'll just keep it zero and I'll let the other options also be activated. And because we created our garment using an A pose, I'll change it to A pose and you'll see why, why that is important. Uh, I'll just add the external mesh right here. So let me just quickly add uh, the pants. You can see that uh, I have added our pants right here. So again, uh, if I were to, uh, you know, suppose I made it in, uh, I've not changed the pose and I've just kept it to T pose. You'll see that uh, it's not tracking our legs properly. Okay, so it's important that we change it to the pose that we created the garment in. So yeah, we've added the garment. Now let me quickly uh, also add the top and then we can see the proximity settings. 
So in order to do that, uh, usually when you again, you know, go to uh, add object and add body mesh, what it would do is create another tracker. Okay, so we don't want two trackers in the scene unless you are creating for two people. So I'll just drag this body mesh on top and delete the second tracker. And just so that we don't get confused, I'll rename this to pans object. And this, uh, I'll change this to top object. And also I'll change the random mesh visual name uh, to full body mesh pants. And the other one to full body mesh top. Okay, so we've added the second body mesh, but it doesn't appear on the user. So that's because uh, even though we've deleted the other tracker, the other body mesh doesn't track the first user. And that's because if I click on this full body mesh uh, resource, you see that the body index in the inspector panel says one. So I'll just change it to zero. Okay, now you'll say, but it's still not visible. That's because if I just click on, again, click on the top uh, OBJ, you see that the position says 180 in X direction, X axis. So I'll just click on zero. So yeah, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure everybody must have faced this problem because I sure did. Like, uh, why wasn't the body mesh, like, you know, visible on the first user? So this is a problem. So you change, you delete the tracker, you put in the tracker that tracks the first person. You also change the position uh, to zero. And in our resources, like in the inspector panel in the render mesh, we change the body index to zero. Okay, so let's add the uh, top and I'll just change the pose again to A and add our top. We have both our um, both our garments. In order to just uh, see all the shades properly, I'll I'll just click on both of these objects and add like an Uber PBR material, just so that I can see it clearly. Now, let's check the proximity settings. I can just click on the body mesh in the resources and here you have the proximity settings. Again, like I said, um, the way this works is it tries to calculate the distance between, between the default body mesh and your garment, the vertices of a garment. So if you were to increase the max distance, it would say, uh, it would tell Lens Studio to calculate uh, vertices that are a little uh, further from the body mesh. Okay, so this is good for like loser garments. And similarly, if uh, you increase the max count, it's just it's just going to increase the number of uh, vertices it's going to calculate. Okay, so say maybe there are say 100 vertices right now it's calculating. Maybe if I increase this, it uh, maybe the vertices will double and it will calculate every small part. Okay, so when you have loser garments, it's best to keep your um, your settings to the higher side. But because we have created a body hugging garment, I'll just keep it to three. Okay. And, uh, and yeah, so sometimes if your vertices are just, you know, uh, they have gone completely uh, haywire, it's probably because you're proximity distance uh, settings are not proper. So you can just tweak it and each each number will give you a different calculation. So you can uh, tweak both the settings together or you know inverse both of them and see how it works for your garment. And I also recommend like, you know, uh, instead of taking your garment as one, uh, just for one body mesh, you take it for, if you have like, you know, say a top, and you have like a jacket. So don't take it as one garment because you would probably want different settings for both. 
okay so because maybe the jacket is looser and the top inside is tight so you need you know like lower numbers for the top and higher numbers for the jacket so instead of having it as one object i would just recommend you take it as two objects as two external meshes so so yeah so like we did right here we've taken like one body mesh for the top and one body mesh for the pants so so yeah so there are also some transforms right here so in case uh, when you export your um, model when you export your 3d model if the position is not in the center of the grid uh, you would have to you know tweak the position rotation and scale but i would suggest you do you zero your transforms in the 3d software from where you're exporting so uh, so yeah so you don't have to make these calculations here so that's that now let's go ahead and uh, import our textures that we created i'll import the um, substance textures and i'll also go and import the photoshop texture so so yeah um, by the time this is compressing i'll just go ahead and assign the right materials to our object so for the pants obj uh okay it's just processing right now in case you have any uh, fashion lenses you've created before feel free to add links to that in the chat and uh, all of us can try it so so yeah and also after this workshop if if like hopefully you've learned something and you can create something uh, from from this uh, so if you've created something uh, that you want to share you can also share this in the youtube comments uh, where it's going to be posted and uh, for the next class maybe we could display it in the start so so yeah let me go ahead and assign the right materials. So for the pants object, there is Uber PBR. Let me just select this, rename this to pants mat. Uh, okay, I'll just duplicate this. Okay. And I'll rename this quickly to top mat. Okay, let's assign it. So for the pants, we have the pants mat. For the top, you need the top mat. Okay, now let's go ahead and assign the textures. So because we used Substance uh, Painter to create our textures, we have uh, all these different um, textures that we can assign. That is the base color. So let's add the base color in the base color uh, input then we'll add the uh, the normal map we'll add the normal map and finally we'll add the material params so you see that because we use the same environment texture uh, uh, environment map sorry you can see uh, like because i used echo park in substance painter and here uh, lens studio also uses echo park we have the colors looking exactly how it looked there and uh, and yeah so let's assign the other textures as well pants mat uh, i'll just again quickly just input the base color the normal map and the material params okay so we have our um, garment Let's just make it two sided so that I can see the inside of uh, I can see the inside of my garments. And now you can see that I can see the inside of the garment because you know when the top curves, I want to see the behind of it. So I've done uh, I've done two sided. So it just allows the textures to be seen on the inside and the outside. But now the problem with this is. Uh, you know the it doesn't look like the user is wearing it so all we need to do is add one more body mesh which would act as an occluder so again i'll just hit the plus button uh, on the, in the objects panel i'll write body mesh and 
what I uh, told you earlier, it creates it for another person. So let me just quickly drag the new body mesh in our tracker and delete the new tracker. Let's just uh, also change the X value to zero. And lastly, let's change the body index to zero. And you can see that my new body mesh is added. And I'll just change the material to the occluder material. So now you can see that it, uh, uh, you know, it, it, it fits the user properly. And we can also see the hands in front of the user. Let's just try it for other body types. And uh, so, yeah, so it fits well. Now, uh, what we also want to add are shoes. So let's go ahead and add shoes. So all you need to do is when you are creating the shoe, just again, create it around the body mesh. And later on, just uh, zero the transforms, take it in middle of the grid, zero the transforms, export it. So what I'll do is I'll just go to my 3D bo uh, body tracker, add a scene object. Let's rename this to right shoe. And uh, we are not going to use the external body mesh method for the shoe. We are going to use the tracking method for the shoe. So first let's import the shoe. Uh, I'll just right click and import, hit import object. And add the shoe. Okay, uh, I'll quickly just hide the UI. Okay, so we've added the shoe, but then it doesn't track properly. It's because we have still not assigned it to the right tracking point. So if I just click on the 3D body tracking object, uh, in the right hand side, we see these attachment points drop down. Okay, so whatever you attach uh, in these points, it will attach, you know, like if you, if you were to attach, um, say, uh, like, uh, arm, you know, weapon or something of that sort, you could just uh, add it to the arm and so on. So what I'll do is I'll just drag the right shoe and assign it to the right foot. Okay, now it's tracking the right foot, but it's inverted. And uh, this will probably face like even if your transforms are proper. So what I'll do is quickly add uh, the proper numbers. You could also just use your move tool uh, you just use your move tool and rotate tool uh, and, and change it in the scene right here. But uh, because I have some precise numbers, I'll just add that. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so now we have the shoe uh, and it's, um, you know, tracking the right leg. We'll again, um, okay, yeah, it's it's the left leg from our perspective, but it's the right leg of the user. So that's how. And um, then I'll just duplicate this and name this as left shoe. And let's just go ahead and again, click on the body tracking drag the left shoe to the left foot and make some transformation adjustments. I'll just change the X to uh, minus 2.5. Uh, also my, my shoe is like symmetrical. So uh, I didn't have to import two different shoe for it, but uh, you could import a different uh, shoe for left and right, or you could just import one shoe and then flip it. So you can just, you know, change the scale to minus uh, in X and it will be flipped and it would look weird in the start. It's because the materials are not two-sided. So, you know, you could do that as well. So yeah, we've completed the look. Uh, we have a garment, we have the shoes. Now you'll ask me, why did I import the Photoshop texture then if you're not gonna use it, but we are gonna use it. So let's see how you can add materials that Blend Studio has provided. So if I click on this asset library right here, you see there are different uh, assets that are provided and uh, 
you can also just right try on and you have all these different models provided and uh, you know we can just import this and again following the same method of uh, you know adding it to the right external text external mesh you can just uh, replace the models for now we are going to see how you can use the materials that are provided by lens studio and we also have other creators who've provided uh, uh, many other uh, materials you can use that as well so today we are going to use the knit fabric material i'll just hit import okay so uh, let me just go to my pants mat. Uh, okay. Change the pants mat to the knit fabric. And I'll also change the top uh, mat to knit fabric. So you can see we have some nice uh, woolen looking, uh, you know, materials. You can scale the UV. So if I just click on the material, I can just scale the UV and make the uh, wool appear to be thicker or smaller. Okay. Now what we'll do is we'll just tweak the um, editor. So in the graph editor, we'll just make some changes and add our Photoshop, the texture that we created in Photoshop. So I'll just hit graph editor right here. And we don't have to uh, mess with all this. We'll just keep it aside and go to the PVR lighting node right here. So we need to change the albedo. Albedo is nothing but the base color. So what I'll do is, again, just to show you, this is the second last node. It's called the PBR lighting node. Okay, this is our main uh, shader, basically. So what I'll do is I'll just hit tab and write 2D and you'll get this texture 2D parameter. So this helps us to add uh, another, you know, input right here for a texture. So what I'll do is I don't want to mess with all the other nodes right here. So I'm going to keep that as well. And I'm going to add this, uh, the new texture that we're going to add. So I'll just drag this and write multiply. Okay, so multiply the new texture and multiply all the rest settings of the shader and add it to our albedo. So now you can see we have one more input. So if I just quickly, you know, switch it and show you. You can see before there was no input for another texture, but now once we just do these settings and um, make the graph as such, we have another uh, input right here. So in the custom map section, I'll just go ahead and use the Photoshop texture that we created. Okay, now you can see that uh, it's loaded. I'll just change the color to white. So you can see that we have the shader with the wool, okay? And we also have a base color. So even though we didn't have, you know, like, material params or normal map, we could just use the default shaders and combine it with our uh, simple uh, Photoshop base texture. So yeah, so we are ready and the we can just publish this. You could again switch back to the previous materials and uh, um, textures, but uh, for now I'll just keep it uh, like this. And we need to check the size. Let's just quickly check the size. Okay, so it says 2 MB, which is nice. Uh, the maximum is 8 MB. We'll change the project info. And uh, let's just call it outfit. And I'll add an icon. And just hit apply. Okay. Uh, Okay, and let's go ahead and hit this publish button right here. Okay, so it's publishing right now. Uh, it, it asks us whether we uh, want to submit it as a business lens or a community lens. I'll just select community lens and hit submit new lens. 
So we have uh, some categories to choose from. So there are all these several categories. So they'll just help uh, users to, uh, you know, uh, find your lens better. So let me just write clothing. So there's a clothing category. So we'll choose that. And the secondary category, um, I'll just choose beauty for now. You can just browse through all the categories and choose the uh, appropriate category. For lens tags, again, tags help uh, users to find your lens better. So I'll just write uh, AR try on um, outfit. Uh, and yeah, you can add up to eight tags. Uh, for now, I'm just keeping it to two. And lastly, there are scan triggers. Now, scan triggers are nothing but if uh, a user, if a user is like you know scanning a particular uh, object, so there's a list of things that you can choose. So if 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 a user is scanning a dog, all the lenses related to the dog would show up over there. So I like to add person. So if somebody is just scanning a person, uh, you know my lenses would show up over there. So so yeah, I do that. And you can also add a nice preview so that um, so that people can see uh, how uh, the lens would look on them, uh, like basically what they'll see on opening. And you can choose whether you want the lens to be public, hidden, or offline, and just hit submit lens. So there you have it. And that's the way you create your very own fashion lens. Now let's look at some questions. Okay, so the first question uh, right here is by Alexandra and um, she asks for creating garment, did you use Marvelous Designer? Uh, and yes, I used Marvelous Designer for creating garments. You could also use Clo. Um, okay. Uh, okay, so the next question is, hi, Pasuka, could you tell me what will be um, particle value for dress in Marvelous Designer? Okay, that's removed now. Um, there is another one. Okay, so it says, uh, can you show the material note set up for Photoshop, um, Photoshop, plus wool material uh, okay let me so you can you can again go through the live stream and you can just take like a screenshot of the whole setup uh, basically i just changed the end node okay uh, so where the albedo is i just added like a 2d texture map so yeah again just to save time and to answer more questions you could again go back to the youtube stream and check the node setup uh, right there. Um, okay, so the next question is, what software were you using to inflate? Uh, so I was using Maya, but you can also use um, you can also use Blender or any other software uh, to create this. So there's ZBrush, there's Blender. Uh, I think even Cinema 4D. I'm not sure, but but yeah, like I used Maya for doing that. Um, okay, uh, how about cloth simulation like uh, stretch uh, frill folds uh, as we move around? So for cloth simulation, uh, I'm going to teach you how to add cloth simulation and do the vertex painting, everything in the next class, which is on August 16th. So tune into that class. Okay, so the questions are done. Okay, so so yeah, we've completed the lens uh, and the workshop for today. And in the next class, again, I'm going to teach you how to do the cloth simulation and the vertex painting, and we're going to see how to create uh, like a dress. Okay, so all the settings for the dress and everything is are going to be uh, shared in that particular class. Also, uh, if you uh, were able to uh, create something by watching this. Uh, class today you can just uh, add the links to your lenses in the comment section on the youtube um, video and maybe in the next class on august 16th we could display some before the workshop would start 
So, Persica, uh, so Caitlin here from the AR developer relations team at SNAP. I was uh, monitoring some of the questions on YouTube and I shared them to you on the chat. Do you think you can take a quick look and answer them uh, in the yeah, final five minutes? Yeah. Thank you. Yes, I just I just have a look. Thank you, Caitlin. Okay. Uh, okay, how will be the particles uh, in Marvelous Designer for making the dress for Lens Studio? Uh, okay, I'm not sure if I understand particles, but uh, maybe uh, it, it, it's related to the poly count. Uh, so what you could do is in Marvelous Designer, uh, uh, yeah, you can choose, you know, the number of, uh, so you can choose whether it is, you know, uh, the particles or the vertices is, is like uh, less or more. So in the uh, in the section where you just write, um, uh, you could choose like ten or twenty or and so on. So by default, the the setting is set to twenty. And for something like a dress with folds, maybe you would go to uh, ten. Okay, so that just increases the uh, polygon count, and maybe then you would have to um you know like uh remesh it because in case it's too high uh it would not work well in lens studio but you can always like you know just import it once in uh lens studio later and check if it works and then remesh it instead of you know uh so yeah so that's one way so you can go to 10 or maybe five but that would just increase the poly count a lot so yeah uh so Zika asks, please show to uh, please show how we can make simulations. Again, the simulation is going to be shown in the next class. Then uh, Mohammed asks, could you tell me what would be the particle val value for the dress? Oh yeah, is the same thing that uh, I answered. The particle value could be five or ten. Okay, for amazing results for folds. Uh, sorry, I was confused by particle, and then I, I realized it's that. So it could be five of five or 10 uh, for better folds. Yeah. And uh, how to save the dress in Marvelous Designer. So you can just hit the export button and uh, uh, I usually export it as an FBX. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, you can like keep the settings as weld and um, sing, uh, single weld. Okay, so just, just so that I answer this question better. Maybe next time I'll show you my settings for exporting the uh, exporting the garment for Marvelous. So yeah, we've answered all the questions, and hope you join the in the next class.